Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Uh, today's topic is the Seifert and Van Kampen theorem, Ray, or the Seifert and Van Kampen theorem for homology, which usually is called the Meyer Vitoris sequence. Uh, we will see what that is actually. Uh, it's named after two Austrian mathematicians, Meyer and Vitoris. And in particular, I will follow a little bit Meyer's original paper, which is actually quite readable and linked in the description, and takes a slightly different approach than what you would see uh, in modern textbooks. Because in modern textbooks, kind of everything is a little bit polished. I will show you the, the modern statement as well, of course. But it's a bit polished, and you can't quite see anymore where it comes from. Um, so I, I wouldn't call my approach really uh, unique. As I said, I'm basically following the paper of Maya, but it might not have not be what you see usually in, in textbooks. Anyway, um, the outcome is the same. So the idea is that um, homology is more than the sum of its parts. So uh, let's have a look. So um, the sum of its parts. So whenever you have a topological space, you should think of there should be some cut and paste procedure. I should there should I should be able to if I have a space X, which in this case is just a disk with a hole, uh, but of course it can be any space, and you cut it into a blue part, a U part which is kind of here, and you cut it into a red part, the V part, which is roughly here. Well, my picture on the right is certainly nicer than my picture on the left. But anyway, and there's some intersection. And of course, you want some mild overlap. So everything should be open in a reasonable sense, the usual story in topology. And you, we would think we would know all of these values. So homologies for U, for V, and the intersection, shouldn't we be able to recover the homology of X, right? So cutting into pieces, uh, the homology of the whole beast should be the sum of its parts in one way or the other. And yeah, it, the outcome is, um, spoiler, spoiler, yes, it will be, uh, we'll see. So, but the idea is always the same, right? You cut a topological space, you just make sure that everything overlaps a little bit, and then you try to recover uh, the big piece from the small pieces. You do the same, for example, in Seifert and Van Kampen, that's why I called this or by why many people actually call this the um, Seifert van Kampen version of uh, for homology. Um, there's, a, there's a subtle, maybe, maybe not too subtle difference to Seifert and van Kampen. So in this theorem, I really don't care whether the intersection is connected. So for Seifert and van Kampen, it's, it's pi one. Um, pi one is defined basically on past connected components. So I should make sure that my intersections are past connected. Here, I don't care because in the end, I'm doing singular homology or something like that. I'm throwing simplices in my space. Um, I, I can do it for non-connected spaces. So this picture, as the, the one you see here, actually works perfectly well. Uh, so does this picture, which I stole from the paper of Meyer. So this is Meyer's original illustration. Uh, the only thing I added are the U's and the V's because that's just my notation and that was not Meyer's notation. Anyway, so it's this idea of this um, surface bit built from annually that are kind of glued together in a slightly overlapping part here. So V is the bottom, U is the top, and this is a hollow beast, so it's hollow in the middle. So in the end, this will be a torus, and uh, U cross uh, U intersected V are the, the two little cylinder types that you see here. And actually, they're all cylinders. Okay, U intersected with V are two cylinders. So you you built a torus by intersecting two cylinders, uh, two cylinders, and um, well, the intersection are two cylinders, too many cylinders for me. But anyway, you get the point. So um, U is a cylinder, V is a cylinder, and U and V, uh, U intersected with V are actually two cylinders. And what um, Bayer then explains in a slightly different language and actually slightly different what I'm, what I'm going to uh, show you on the next page is the following inequalities on hilbert poincare polynomials. Remember that those hilbert poincare polynomials were just the Betty numbers, but you also keep track of which Betty number is where by using the parameter t. So these are the dimensions of the, the graded dimensions of the homology groups. And it, in this case, it's pretty easy to compute. So we actually want to know this one. And I spoiled the story because I already know it and uh, because I want to explain what's going on. So this is the answer I would like to know here, one plus two t plus t squared. And the cylinder um, is just a circle, of course, and two cylinders are just two circles. So it's one plus t. So um, I, I say it again how it works. One plus t means h0 is one dimensional, h1 is one dimensional, and everything else is zero. So this here means 
H0 is one dimensional, H1 is two dimensional, H2 is one dimensional and everything else is zero. I just record the dimensions in the polygon a little bit more than I told you. And of course, um, the motivation here is I've cut my space, place into pieces and I kind of know all the pieces. So what can I say about this one here? So this one is the one we want to know. Um, of course, I already know it. Ignore that I already know it. I use it here just as an example. Let's say we want to know it. Um, so then my guess would be that we should be able to recover this polynomial from the other two polynomials in one way or the other. And this is really where Maya and Vitor is coming. So then Maya goes on, same picture as above, and kind of explains the following inequalities on polynomials. And with inequalities on polynomials, I mean degree-wise. So um, a polynomial is smaller or equal than another polynomial if in each, for, for each uh, degree, so for each um, coefficient of t, the corresponding number is smaller. So one plus t, for example, is smaller or equal than uh, two plus three t because uh, one and the secret coefficient one here, one is smaller than two, one is smaller than two, and one is smaller than three. So this really should hold uh, component, uh, so degree wise. So this one, for example, one plus two t is not, is not relatable to two plus one t because they are kind of not really, so it, it's, uh, it's bigger, it's smaller in the first component, but bigger in the second component, they're not comparable. So what I'm saying here is, so my inequality of polynomials is they are piecewise smaller, so really piecewise smaller. And then you make those calculations and I just arrange the, uh, the results from the previous slide and you get those three inequalities on polynomials, which I'm going to explain uh, in a second, but you get three and you will see that in the abstract formulation of Maya Vitoris. So you actually get this inequality that Px is smaller or equal to Pu plus Pv, so kind of what I expected, and you kind of need to shift the Pu intersected with V a little bit. So um, if you do this calculation using the corresponding ingredients here, you see that this is a, has a t, t squared and none of the others has a t squared. So you need to do something to the coefficients here. And the solution is, very, this is a simple one. You just multiply one of them by t. And then of course you have a t squared. So on the right hand side, um, so on the left hand side, you have the, the one you would like to compute. And on the right hand side, what you see is two uh, plus four t plus two t squared, if you would, uh, if you would uh, uh, expand this polynomial. And this is, as I said, degree-wise bigger than the other side. And that's equality holds in general. Uh, similarly, you have those equalities here. You could get a, um, so each one of those, so Px could be on the left-hand side. You have three, kind of three ingredients. P u plus Py could be on the left-hand side or the last one. Um, so uh, u intersected with v could be on the left-hand side. And these are the equalities. Uh, you get, and Maya explains very nicely how you get them on the Poincaré polynomials using a slightly outdated language, but basically that's what, what, what Maya does. And that's all really good, right? So you can kind of recover the Px from the other ones because you have a bunch of inequalities going on and the Maya Vitoria sequence actually tells you how to make, so what is missing, how to make those into equalities. So let's have a look at the now formal statement as you would find it roughly from the 50s onwards, where the uh, notion of exact sequence came up. So it really is for any topological space, you can play this game with subspaces uh, U and V. Um, it's really this idea that you have the sequence and you have some successive terms here. And here is your degree shift. So because this one jumps down from N to N minus one, I will explain the boundary map in a second here. But basically, they are only just the induced maps from the inclusions. Uh, and then you just get the sequence of homology. And the point is, this is exact. And what does this mean? This means it measures this difference on the other slide between um, the inequalities. Because, well, let's, let's pick, you have three of them. And the only thing I do here, as you can see, this kind of has a three periodicity built in. It's uv, u plus v, x, and then it's uv again. So just pick out your favorite one. In this case, I picked out an X. You look at the two neighbors and as kind of now an exact, uh, an exact sequence almost, which wants to say in the right setup, let's say for vector spaces, you would have this, uh, this 
part of the sequence, which is exact, which means hx is a direct sum of the others. In other words, the dimension of hx is the sum of the others. And that's not quite true because the whole sequence is exact and not just this little part. So, and this um, gives you exactly the inequality on, on Borgner A polynomials. So let, let me see, can we see that here's hx? That's what you put on this side and all the others are on the other side. So this one is here, this one is here. This one has a grading shift. That's why you get a T, it's here, and this one is here. And why is this an inequality? I'll also say it again, because not this little piece of the sequence is exact. If it would be, it would be an equality. No, or the whole sequence, the, the whole part, the whole bunch, the whole long sequence is exact. So in that sense, Maya Vitoris tells you um, kind of how far your inequalities are away from being equalities. It kind of fills in the missing parts. Really, really nice. Um, so let me have a look at the sequence again. It's really just u uh, intersected with v. You map it into u plus v using the inclusions. You map that one into x using the inclusions. Slight catch here. There's a sign in this whole setup. So we have secretly have chosen an order uh, of for u and v. Anyway, let's ignore that. You use the inclusions again to map it into x, kind of the natural part of the sequence, right? So u uh, intersected with v is a small one, map it into uv, map it into x, you get a part of the sequence. And the boundary map here, the one I show you on the next hand slide, is kind of measuring how far this part of the sequence is uh, away from being exact. And the kind of it's measuring how far um, the inequalities, the inequalities on Hilbert Bonkroy polynomials are away from being equal. So it's a very nice thing, um, right? So you can kind of recover uh, x from its pieces, uh, the sum of its parts, not quite. There is something something missing, right? It's they just get inequalities and not equalities. Anyway, so this is how, how the boundary maps are constructed using exactly the same um, picture again, now stolen from Wikipedia, which doesn't use, well, which use this illustration, which is equally well. It's the same setup. You still have those annually intersecting, those, those um, annually intersecting, not annually those cylinders intersecting, and it's really the same same picture. U v u, u uh, intersect with v, and the point is that a cycle in X. So this is this thing uh, here on my surface that goes around. You can actually write this in. in you, you can break it apart because u and v cover cover X. So you can make it uh, into a sum. Of a uh, of a, a chain in U, so here's your chain in U, and uh, chain in V. Here's your chain in V. It goes around in this picture, but it doesn't matter. So you can really break it apart into those two chains, and then using some um, and obviously the boundary of those chains, you do this such that the boundary of those chains land in the intersection, and you use this to cook up this boundary map. Right? You you take your your cycle. That's an uh, element of Hn. You break it into a part in U. You break it into a part in V. The, uh, the boundary of, of, of those lies in U uh, intersected with V. And that's basically what you assign um, to your cycle. And you get a boundary map. And the surprising statement here is that this boundary map is kind of sufficient to measure um, what is missing in your, in your set of inequalities. OK, let me wrap up. Maya Vitoris. Um, the seifert van Kampen theorem for homology, take your space, cut it into pieces. You don't even care anymore whether the intersection is, um, is connected or not. Just cut your space into pieces and you get, an inequ you get three inequalities on the hilbert poincare polynomials kind of really naturally, um, as Maya explained in his original paper. Um, it's not so hard to see. And then Maya goes on and also explains kind of what is missing. Um, just for, for historical reasons, I should add that um, Vitoris then was the one who formulated everything in terms of homology. In Maya's paper, you will find everything formulated in Hilbert Poincare polynomials or actually in Betty numbers. Anyway, um, so, um, and the sequence, kind of having this boundary map that I showed you before, tells you what is missing for your inequalities being equalities. And of course, if you have equalities, you can recover the Px, the one you are interested in, from the pieces Pu, Pv, and P intersected U, right? And that's the whole point. And then you can compute homology for big spaces from homology for smaller spaces. 
anyway, um, I'm already starting waffling, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.